Hi beautiful people, it's Amy from Saber Salvage Scent and I hope you are fantastic in spite of the challenges of the day. Today I bring to you the second part of a two episode series um, requested by my friend Nicole and subscriber um, focused on scents for bedtime. The first uh, episode, I'll link below, and was focused on bedtime scents for coziness and comfort. The second episode today is focused on bed scents, perhaps when you're not going to bed alone, or um, when you would like to lure someone into your bed. So, um, for those of you who have never been to my channel before, thank you for stopping by. Um, this is Saber Salvage Scent, and it mostly focuses on fragrance with um, an occasional video about other creative and DIY projects. Um, thanks so much to my subscribers. You're the best. Um, I encourage anyone to leave questions, comments, um, unless of course they're downright just crappy doesn't happen too often but every once in a blue moon so um, today I'm going to talk about 20 I think six scents that I think are range from come hither mmm that smells terrific to um, downright tools for seduction and you better be re ready to carry around a big stick to beat people off with. Okay, so um, the first grouping are the kind of softer or more flirtatious or come hither scents. Um, so I'll start there. I find that they have similarities in that some of them are kind of buttery florals, more honeyed scents softer skin scents that kind of you know that saying they smell like your skin but better um and yeah and then we get into the second grouping that is i would say really either bold or seductive kind of um compositions so i find that um the second grouping there's more compos like there's more elements often and then there are certain elements like um, gosh, dried down patchouli, um, uh, boozy qualities, things like that, musks, heavier musks. So anyway, I'll dive right in and start with those that I find to be a little more gentle uh, or flirtatious. So the first one I'm going to talk about is a brand new scent to me, although it's been out for some time and it's discontinued. I think it's been out for God, 10 or 20 years. I have to be honest, part of the reason I bought this is because I love a gorgeous bottle, especially if it has like a, an Asian or um, Middle Eastern flair. So this is Guerlain's Mahora, and this is sadly discontinued. You can still find it pretty for a pretty decent price. Um, look at this bottle. I don't know if you can see, there's just incredible detail. Um, oh gosh, this is so good. Um, this to me is like a super, super buttery tuberose. For those of you who aren't familiar, sometimes certain white florals, tuberose being one of them, can have a real almost heady, buttery, sometimes even milkiness to it. And then when this dries down, a little bit more warmth comes through and then like that kind of like soft bubble gum effect. So it just makes you smell really wonderful and delicious. So Guerlain's Mahora, gorgeous thing. Okay, next is, um, so if we just talked about a floral scent that has like a seductive element, this is an Alchemia scent. For those of you who aren't familiar, that is a small indie house out of, I think Amherst, Massachusetts. The nose's name is Shara Lemru, and she works with a small team of people, um, including a gent named uh, Mateus, who's incredible. Anyways, they're just quality humans. They're so lovely, and they make magical things. So this scent is called A Roll in the Hay. Um, listen, I should have said right off the bat, this video probably is much or more than any um, 
fragrance video is subjective. So obviously the things that I find warming, seductive, sexy are based somewhat on my experience. And I would call this, I grew up on a farm when I was really young and I live in the Midwest. I would call this like a Midwest flirtation. Uh, this smells like warmed hay and grass. Um, gosh, what else do I get from it? When it dries down, you get a little more of the kind of vanillic, God, almost ambrosial like quality. So yeah, it's, it's grassy hay, warmed. And then when it dries down, you get a little more like vanillic ambery quality. So a roll on the hay, it's just, it smells like what it is. It's so good. All right, next. Oops, sorry, my camera skills, I know. Um, someday when I'm a millionaire, maybe I'll change, be able to change that. Um, okay, next is a, um, I think underrated scent. My understanding is this went through some reformulation recently. Um, this is Kate Walsh's boyfriend. Um, this is the old version, I think from like, I want to say it's from 2012, 13, something like that. Um, it was reformulated a few years ago. So I would say if this sounds of interest to you, try to get your hands on the old ones. And so this is an oil. Um, I got two of these on eBay, gosh, a year or two ago after they had been discontinued. People didn't, I don't think knew what they, that they were special. I got them like two for 20 bucks or something. Um, first of all, I love it cause it's an oil based. I will say though, when you first apply this, you might not smell it very much. It's like one of those that it really does kind of blend with your skin or mine. And then it's not for like a few minutes where you, you'll cat, catch a whiff of something and be like, gosh, I smell good. Like that's really nice. Um, to me, this is a like slightly woody, ambered musk. Um, you know, and I think musks, they just smell like warmed skin to me, sometimes clean. This is not so much a clean one. It's more of like a woody, ambery musk. This is beautiful. So Kate Walsh's boyfriend is a really nice kind of flirtatious, your skin, but better come hither scent. Um, okay, next. I have uh, two from Solstice Scents here, and then I might have one or two more later. Um, one is called Smokewood Apiary. This also comes in a perfume, I believe. This is a five milliliter oil. This is a house um, out of, God, is it St. Petersburg, Florida? It's out of Florida. And the um, nose's name is Angela St. John. She works with her partner who does the artwork. They're both just so cool one of the greatest things that happened to me in 2019, 20 was discovering this house. It's beautiful. Anyway, Smokewood Apiary is a wonderful honey scent. Um, as you know, honey's sugary, heady, sappy. It's beautiful. Um, but I find sometimes modern day honey scents are just like too much. They're too sugary. They're too, um, chemically. This smells just like honey with a tiny bit of smokiness. Mm. And then when it dries down, it becomes more ambery. Yeah, it's great. Smokewood Apiary by Solstice Scents. Another one by Solstice Scents that is, I think, so, maybe not sexy, but mm, delicious, is um, Black Mallow. This just, I believe, just comes as an oil. Uh, this is about, most of their oils are like 15 to $18. By the way, they're closed temporarily until about April. They take a little hiatus when they work on their business during that time, I'm sure. Um, Black Mallow. This smells, they're so good at marshmallow, somehow without it being juvenile. This is marshmallow with a hint of black jelly bean. So if you don't like anise or don't like licorice, you probably won't like this. It is very light in it though, and it has a tiny bit of smokiness. So it just makes your skin smell so sweet in a good way, soft with that little bit of anise or licorice to just give it a little spice. It's gorgeous, really warm, lovely uh, Black Mallow by Solstice Scents. Um, next, another gourmand that's wonderful, um, kind of as a come hither scent. 
Um, this is probably the one that smells most like baked goods <laughs> in my list. This is, is it Kais or Kies? I'm not sure. Perfumes. Um, I think she's out of, this is another independent perfumer out of California. Um, this is Praline a Caramel. God, is this good. This is relatively new to me. This is to me the nicest, like, nutty scent that I have. It is, if you've ever baked with uh, marzipan or specifically like a pistachio or an almond paste, it smells like that with a little bit of booze. And it's not, um, I find sometimes when people try to create kind of toasted or nutty scents, they smell too chemical or too fake, I should say. And this is just wonderful. It is so warm and delicious. You're just walking around smelling like a snack. It's wonderful. Praline on caramel by Kais. Um, next is, I try not to say a lot or hmm, give all my support to houses that knock up other people's scents. Um, I try to always find the originals. However, there are a few that are cost prohibitive to me. Um, and frankly, both of the scents in this lineup today that are, I believe, supposed to be close to another scent, I'm not sure that they are even created as dupes, so I feel a little better about it. I think they just happen to smell like. Um, this is one by an Italian company called uh, La Bellario, and this is Meharis. Um, often people say that this smells a lot like Frederick Malle's Musgravajour. I would, I smelled a little sample of it once, I was crazy about it. They are pretty close. I like this as much or more. This is about $30, where Musgravajour, I believe, is about $300. Um, if you have those funds, though, they're the ones that created uh, an original. This, this I don't believe is a knockoff, but it's very close. So let me tell you about what it is if you haven't experienced it. It is musk. It's a nice blend. It's like musk. Mm. Amber, vanillic, dates. Like, it almost smells a little boozy. God, it's good. It is gorgeous. It's interesting because this is marketed to men. Look at me. You will just smell delicious. Nobody's going to care who it's marketed to. It's wonderful. Meharis by Lara Bellario. Okay, two more by Alchemia. Um, gosh, I'm really getting into this house this year. Um, these, I believe, are both relatively, well, the first one is pretty new. I don't even think it's reviewed on Fragrantica. So, um, this is what their, um, bigger perfumes look like. This is called the Honored Ghosts. Um, this just came out, I think, this year. Oh, God, this smells so good. <laughs> this is such a great fruit-based scent. There are so many, I think, juvenile or too sheer or dime a dozen fruit scents, frankly. This is so cool. The main player to me is like a raspberry cream. However, there are all these other things along with it. So there's tea in this. God, I want to say there's incense. I love incense. A little vanilla. It is gorgeous, gorgeous, the Honored Ghosts. Her perfumes, I think, are about 45 Really great price, too. Just beautiful. And you're not going to be walking around smelling like everybody else because they're one of a kind. Um, oops. If you don't break it, I get too excited. All right. Um, next, another Alchemia scent. Um, the wonderful uh, content provider, Deborah Day, on YouTube. I love her. I love her uh perfume collection. She's just got such a warm way about her and um, she has to me a re really original collection with many different kinds of things in it. Um, I had already been loving Alchemia and then I read, I listened to one of her videos. I think it was like her top 10 or her most unique scent, something like that. And she mentioned Aphrodisia. I had been thinking about getting my hands on this. Man, am I glad that I did. I bought this last year thanks to her recommendation. This to me, um, this is like, <laughs> bear with me. There's a lot of scents that I would say those of us who grew up in the 70s and 80s would say smell like head shop scents, like incense kind of, nag champa kind of scents. 
This is special though. It's a bit more refined. And again, it's got this, it's just the, the composition. It's ambery. It's got a boozy vanilla thing. It's frankincense. Maybe a tiny bit of other things playing. The word aphrodisia is perfect. I mean, you just are like, I want to be close to that person, including myself. Like the first few times I wore it, I was like, I can't believe how good it smells. So Alchemia's Aphrodisia. So good, you guys. So good. All right. Next. This was like a blind buy from, I believe, um, TJ Maxx years ago. And man, was I glad that I made it. I just, I have a thing about the color of this bottle and... I think I looked up online and it said it was kind of ambery. So I was like, all right, I'm going to give it a shot. I think I paid 20 or 30 bucks for this. This is Suki Essence by the House of Wild. This is a deal, y'all. I would say if you can find it under 50 bucks, it's great. It is, you could tell me this is a two or $300 perfume and I believe you. It's so good. Okay, let me tell you a little bit more about it. Mm, I must have a thing about dates and raisins. I do. This, to me, is like cinnamony, resinous, vanilla, warm, and it has dates. You can definitely smell the dates. So good. Suki Essence. Again, just makes your skin smell so nice. People just think you smell terrific when you wear it. So, perfumes, wow. Wonderful. Okay. <clears throat> Next. <laughs> so, my friend Nicole that I inspired me to make this video this is one of her favorite scents and mine too unfortunately um is not as it used to be really dirt cheap when it first kind of hit the market and it could be found in discount stores now you have to really hunt for it and pay a bit more this is stash by sarah jessica parker i think this is one of the best woody scents you'll ever smell again this is niche quality you could tell me this is a gazillion dollars i would believe you um this is the hair oil I gave Nicole my perfume. We did a swap. She gave me something wonderful for it in exchange too. Um, I love this oil. I use it on my pulse points in my hair. And it is just the sexiest wood scent. I can smell a little vetiver too. I know people love or hate vetiver. It's a very hay-like dried grass kind of smell. Um, and there's a bit of musk in this too. I find this perfectly unisex. Um, I, I think you should wear whatever you like at any time. I don't care how it's marketed, but this to me is kind of like, could be seen as a, um, anywhere on the gender spectrum, spectrum scent. Um, beautiful, woody, intoxicating people compliment this a lot. Um, Stash by Sarah Jessica Parker. Okay. A couple more in the flirtatious or come hither or skin scent category. One is some of, some of you might be surprised by my choice with this. Um, this is one of my favorite rose scents. Sadly, I think it is also being discontinued. This is Lola by Marc Jacobs, one of the greatest bottles ever. So cute. Um, this is a wonderful rose scent and it has some, um, it almost has a, <laughs> geranium and rose, I believe, are kind of similar in their, the way they show themselves in perfume. It smells like a cross between those two. It definitely has some plum in it too, which gives this rich, ripe, mm, good dark fruit kind of smell. It has a little bit of musk. If you told me this had patchouli in it, I would believe you. I don't see it as one of the notes, but the sexiness in this scent is all in the dry down. When it dries down, this is one of those, it's almost like, almost too much for me when you first spray it and then like an hour in you'll smell yourself and be like this has gotten so good like it is um the muskiness i think there might be tonka in this um and again i don't see it as a note but like this musky patchouli thing comes out for me uh in the dry down and it just gets really sexy mark jacobs lola get your hands on it soon if you are thinking about it because it's going out of, out of print and it's getting more expensive. Okay. Um, an underrated scent. I also think this might be either being discontinued or it's in the discount stores right now. This is uh, Nirvana and James, um, or sorry, Elizabeth and James Nirvana Black. Really cool. I love that bottle. I think it's so cool. Um, <sighs> Nirvana is a great name for the scent. So this is like 
one of those things, it has just a few notes, but the way it's composed is like rocking. It's so beautiful, so gorgeous. It is woodsy. I don't know what kind of wood. Uh, vanillic and violet. People tend to love or hate violet. It's got like an anise quality powdery too. So the three of those things together just create this gorgeous concoction. And this is another one I think is perfectly unisex. And when it dries down, I think it gets better and better. Like you'll catch it and it lasts. Like I get six, eight hours from this. And I, my skin doesn't hold on to scent in a tremendous way. So that's a really good wear for me. Okay, that was Elizabeth and James Nirvana Black. Now we're moving into the scents that you might even have to be careful to wear. They might not be fit for work. They're definitely fit for if you're getting your game on. Um, they're gorgeous. I have been chased wearing some of these. Um, in partnerships, I have had to practically um, fend for myself wearing these. I have chased after other people asking about these scents. So here we go, 13, Jimmy Choo. Don't judge me. So, um, I, well, I love all kinds of perfumes. I would say sometimes I judge like designer perfumes. I just think I would have, I would have thought this would be run of the mill and perhaps even corny, right? I'm at a bar one night having dinner and a cocktail and the woman who is working at the bar, every time she walks by, I'm like, what is going? How can, how, who smells this good? Who smells so good? I couldn't tell it was her at first. And finally she bent over to like bring my drink to me. And I was like, I am sorry if you think I'm a creep right now, but I have to know what you're wearing. Like, I, I don't, I don't understand. And she was like, you're not going to believe what it is. And she pulled out the bottle from her purse and she told me where to get it. I mean, like she was like, it's at TJ Maxx right now. It's this much money. You got to go get a bottle. I did. I literally left the place and bought this Jimmy Choo. So let me tell you about what's in it and why I think it's so good. So this is, you know, um, described as a fruit chuli. There's a gazillion fruit chulis on the market. Some of them are not terrific. Um, they're run of the mill. In fact, Oh my God, this is good. Okay. So Definitely fruit, definitely patchouli. I don't always love patchouli, but the ones I love are like this, they leave this trail or this sexiness in the dry down. So this is fruit and patchouli. Add some greenness, add a little citrus. So not just like ripe, you know, plum or pear, but add a little, add a little citrus and then add orchid that has like a vanillic buttery quality. All of these things just create something that is, what would I call it, um, mysterious? Like, she just smelled incredible, this woman. And, and then, you know, when I wear it, I've had people just say, like, you have to tell me what you're wearing. It smells so good. So Jimmy Choo, here we are. Really good. All right, next, one by Tokyo Milk called Tainted Love. Beautiful, look at that bottle, gosh, love it. This is to me a dark vanilla. It is, um, oh God, <laughs> so good. It's vanilla, orchid, sandalwood, and a hint of tea, like a dark, dark tea, even maybe a little smokiness to it. Dark, gorgeous, gothic vanilla, tainted love, perfect, so good. Okay, next I'm gonna talk to you about one of my first loves. Also a favorite of my friend Nicole who uh, requested this and uh, yeah, purchased this based on I think my wearing it and she loved it and then she it became one of her signature scents too. Um, Bulgari's Jasmine Noir, unfortunately another discontinued scent. Again, you can still find it somewhat affordably, so if you are interested, get your hands on it soon. One of the sexiest bottles to me ever. Um, this is... I love jasmine and I love a lot of white florals. Um, you know, so many perfumes these days are named something noir and they're not even dark or darker or a more intense version of the original. I don't get it. This so lives up to its name. It's like, imagine a white floral, but then the darkness comes through. Mm. So 
sorry, what am I getting? A little wood, tonka bean, I think incense, and then I think there's some patchouli in this one too. So again, it's like luscious and truly, like this was one, I hate to say it, but um, if I needed to use my powers of persuasion, <laughs> When I was a little younger and dating, this was a favorite. Just gorgeous. Memorable. People asked you what you had on. It's gorgeous. Whenever my friend wears it, I'm like, oh, she just smells so good. Jasmine Noir by Bulgari. Amazing. All right. Next is a wonderful, recently um, gotten or purchased cheapie. Uh, Javon's Secret Amber. Don't discount this. Some of you grew up wearing Javon. I love them, even the old school cheapies. I have said before, there's not many a musk I don't like. Um, but this, or amber too. Uh, this secret amber can be found for about 20 bucks online. It is so good, you guys. It is to me niche quality. And it is amber, a little bit of spice, and then like boozy vanilla. I find that a lot of the really sexy scents to me have like a boozy quality. Um, Oh my God, Javon Secret Amber. Do yourself a favor, it's so good. I also find this totally unisex, um, gorgeous. Okay, this might be like the, the next one might be the perfume to sail a thousand one night stands. <laughs> I don't know. It is a quintessential sexy fragrance. I mean, you can wear it in the workplace carefully. Um, and it doesn't always have to be used for <laughs> seduction, but it is, it just ma makes you smell so good, so memorable. My God, knock somebody out. The original Dior Attic. This is a newer bottle, but um, if you can find an older bottle, this is to me one of the best vanillas on the market. It's vanilla Tonka. I think it has a little benzoin in it, but I hope I'm not wrong. Um, it has um, orange blossom in it too, and um, it is just this gorgeous vanilla and it leaves a trail. It's like a smokiness to it. Um, Dior Addict, look out when you wear it. Yeah, so good. Okay, while my first little section had like some kind of more gentle skin kind of musks, now a lot of people might disagree. <laughs> I think this is animalistic, It's or animalic, sorry. Those are different. Um, musk so this is keel's original musk a lot of people find this to be a clean and soapy musk i find it just to be sexy and this is another one i think a lot of people think they don't like musk because they wore up with they grew up with cheap musks whenever i wear this men women animals <laughs> stop me <laughs> and are just like you smell so good what do you have on you smell good um keel's original musk this is a really affordable scent I think it's about 40, 45. Often they have sales around the holidays and you can get it for like 30. Um, just gorgeous. Uh, this to me is a quintessential, this is like dictionary musk. It is the perfect musk to me. It's gorgeous. Oh, so good, kills musk. All right, just a few more y'all. We're getting into the territory of like, you're gonna have to beat somebody off with a stick. Um, this is how powerful and gorgeous and seductive these are. Hypnotic Poison by Dior. Another amazing vanilla, but add almond, add a little bit. I don't think that there's like licorice or anise in this, but it's got an anise root beer quality. Um, oh my God. It's so good. Hypnotic Poison is the perfect name for this. And I think perfumes are often ridiculously named, unabashedly like, can't live up to their claims. This does. It is hypnotic. It's gorgeous. It's sweet without being horrendously sweet. Anyways, it's buttery. It's beautiful. It smells like root beer. So good. Hypnotic poison. All right. This is another one that I believe they say, the infamous say, that it's made to smell like another scent or that it comes really close. Um, I would love to smell perfume or perfume de Marley's. Um, Ouijan or Ovijan. Um, it is supposed to be like one of the best oriental kind of based scents. This is Alexandria Fragrances Apple Crumb. 
I, a couple years ago, was on like a perfume forum and said I was looking for something that smelled like an adult version of apple pie. And this woman that I love said, you've got to get your hands on this. I found this for like 30 or 35 on eBay, I want to say. And it is, it smells like the most sophisticated apple spice scent with some amber, maybe even a little resin, a little smokiness. This is... Like, I, I just smell it. You can't, it's so good. And I haven't sadly tried Ojan. It's like really out of my price range. Um, so if you can try either one of these, I would say, and if you like Apple, but a really sexy grown-up version, get yourself this. All right. This was another one of my first loves and something I wore like <laughs> when I was dating heavily. And um, yeah, it just was like, gorgeous people would like follow you around um this is a flank of lolita limpica it's oh i forget to look up how this is pronounced it's like is it minuet oh brother french um and it's the noir version this was called like i believe both of them smelled the same there was the noir version without the little ivy but this was like the couture version i found this at tj maxx like i don't know 10 years ago or something for I think 20 or 30 bucks. This is sadly discontinued. It now runs about two to 300. Um, you can still find its sister uh, perfume, the Minuet, without the couture, without the like little leaves and designs for I think 60 or 70. Um, anyways, this is a killer. There's nothing to me exactly like it. I'm gonna have to get another bottle. I don't know how I'm gonna do that. Um, it is incredible. It is, if you, okay, if you like licorice or anise, I'm telling you, think of like a gothic hypnotic poison. This has, um, okay, definitely licorice, little anise, jasmine, iris, benzoin, and vanilla. This to me looks like what it is, it is a gothic scent, dark. If you like Lolita Lampica, the original, imagine a creamier, darker, um, heavier hypnotic scent. It is gorgeous. And when you wear it, I mean, seriously, you're going to have to be beat people off with a stick. Like it is, people are just like, I want to be close to you. I can't stand being away from you. I literally, when I was dating somebody would get message like, like this from this person. And I think it was this perfume. Yes. Lolita Lampica. Beautiful. Um, okay. Four more y'all. And all right. Solstice scents. Ugh. Solstice Kifi. This is my favorite incense right now. It is so good. It is about, I think it's about 85 or 90 a bottle. It is the best incense you could ever imagine with some honey, with some fruit, smokiness, all the things I love in one bottle. It's got like a raisin thing going on. It smells like the best ritual or temple or altar you could ever put together. Solstice Kifi by Solstice Scents. I'm telling you, if you like incense, resins, it's one of the greatest things ever. Yeah. Um, my favorite find of 2020, this is a, a scent called Desert Floor, made by a company called Bohemian Raves. I think they're out of Florida. God, I can't remember. Anyways, go to their website. Super affordable. I think this retails for about 40 something like that, but it off, they, they get incentivize you if you're the first time user of their website. They also have it at Anthropology, but I would say try to find it on their site because the money goes to the creator then. But if you can't find it, Anthropology I think has just roller balls. Anyways, this is my favorite patchouli based scent. It is patchouli and boozy vanilla, and that's about it. Um, but I'm telling you, it, it is the perfect combination. It leaves a trail in the best way. People think you smell bomb. You can't get enough of yourself. It's freaking gorgeous and such a deal. Desert Floor by Bohemian Raves. Love it. All right, these last two are off the charts. <laughs> like, seriously, get ready. Get ready for like ninja skills when you wear these. All right, one is Tom Ford's Lost Cherry. I often say about this, it lives up to its name. It's ripe. It is voluptuous. It is, um, almost body, cherry and booze. Maybe a little vanilla. I mostly get cherry and 
rum or booze. It is so crazy. Beautiful on, and look at that bottle. It's a gazillion dollars. I think it's about $350, but I found this online through um, Russia, and I waited and waited for months, and guess what? It's, it's the real deal. It's gorgeous. Lost Cherry, Tom Ford. Really, really good. Crazy beautiful. And again, you just smell like the most seductive dessert walking around. Last but not least, oh gosh, I'm gonna have to find the name of this woman. Oh, I forget. She's a lovely person who sells, she's been a longtime perfume collector for like, I wanna say 20 or 30 years, and she puts together these little collections on that you can purchase on eBay, and they explore themes. And one, I had friends over, we had like a party one night and explored one of her kind of curated sets, and it was all like about seduction. and. This was the favorite, so I had two other friends who are over, who are pretty deeply into perfume, and all three of us, and we have wildly different tastes, loved this. I don't know what I'm gonna do, because this is a pretty expensive scent. I wanna say it's about $200, and it's not made in the US. Uh, this is called Hedonist by Victoria Minya. You can see I'm toward the end here. Um, I fell in love with this so much. We were all just like, we had smelled all of the scents that night, maybe 10 or 20, and this was the one we all could not get over it, and then we all learned how expensive it was and hard to get in the US, we were like, oh no. So I posted on a fragrance set, woe is me, I will never get the scent. And this incredible person sent me her partially used bottle because apparently she had a lot of perfume, and this was even in a beautiful like silk case. This is the most gorgeous, rummy scent you will ever smell. It's the one I'm wearing today. I can't even, like it is body, gorgeous, still sophisticated somehow, rum, ambery. The word hedonist is like <laughs> perfect description. It's ripe. You just smell incredible. I mean, all of us that night, we just kept going back to this one tester being like, we put it on our skin, we kept smelling each other's skin. It's just so gorgeous, Victoria. Minya's Hedonist. I hope to find another bottle. Wish me luck. Whew. Um, easier, I think, for those of you who are over the pond to find this, perhaps. So, this to me is my sexiest scent. I hope that you all enjoyed this. I would love to hear from you as far as what your um, game on scents are and what you think I'm missing. And, uh, yeah. What's your sexiest scent? We'd love to hear about it. Have a great day. Cheers. Bye.